in tackling post-harvest losses, creating employment and bringing youths on board in agriculture value chain from the lower eastern part of Kenya, Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization has partnered with Purdue University in a project dubbed as Sustainable Resilient Supply Chain. The project, which is a model of youth input reseller, is targeting youths from Kitui, Machakas and Makweni counties. So we designed this project with Purdue University. Uh, we looked at issues of post-harvest and we have uh, technologies that we wanted the youth to participate with and then and also bring the agro dealers across the region and we hope that the, the success stories of this project can be replicated in some parts of the region. According to Dr. Patrick Ketain, the principal investigator, food processing and post-harvest handling innovation lab, the Laser Pulse project has brought on board youths into the agriculture value chain. It has been very interesting working with the youths, uh, working with agro dealers who are the major players and the farmers. We can be able to report that uh, We've had some very good success and learning lessons for this project. On dealing with post-harvest issues, he further says that Kenya loses up to 40% of annual harvest. Uh, we lose up to 40% uh, of uh, annual harvest. This project wanted to make a serious contributions in terms of uh, the management of post-harvest dollars through the provision of technology. So we were able to disseminate two types of technologies. First is on uh, how do we do the storage using uh, emetic bags. The other technology before, before the use of the, the bags was to, to support farmers with uh, uh, grain moisture meters. Moisture measurement is, uh, is a challenge. If you go to rural areas, our farmers are using very conventional methods. We wanted the farmers to access very simple low-cost technologies. From the model project, Dr. Ketain says that Carlo will share the technology with other partners so that it is upscale. So from this project of Lesser Pals that has been successfully implemented by Calro and Badu, we are picking the lessons that have already been achieved. And going forward, I think Calro will continue to share the information to other partners to ensure that uh, the technologies are upscale. Wyatt Pracht, who is the Dean Lead Investigator of the Lesser Pals project at Purdue University, says that in this project, youths were trained on various components which include business, gender and post-harvest, among others. What we've been trying to do through this current project is run a randomized control trial. And a randomized control trial, if you're not aware, generally you have at least two groups that study participants are randomly allocated to. One being the control group and then one being the treatment group. So in our case, um, the treatment group is a, you can think about is the group that receives the intervention. So in our case, this was youth being able to be trained in various components such as business, gender, um, and post-harvest um, grain management as well as input usage. And then also receiving inputs and being connected to an agro dealer to be able to sell the inputs during the post-harvest period um, in Eastern Kenya. He further says that there was gender parity in their study, gender being a thorny issue in the agricultural sector. So one um, really important aspect about our study is that we actually had gender parity almost um, in our study. So we had about 397 total um, youth and roughly, I think more than half of that number were female. And then by looking at the disaggregated impacts by things such as what your gender are, um, we actually saw that women were as likely to be successful as men. So that's something that we're happy about, that there was no strategic disadvantage based on your gender. Speaking on future of the project, Wired had this information to players in agriculture value chain. So our future goal is to analyze the data and kind of see what the long, what the short and long-term impacts of this were. So how many people were able to sustain a business beyond the short-term results that we have from our last survey. Um, so that will help us talk about sustainability and scalability of this project moving forward. Kikoril, who was among the Carlo team and a trainer in the project, says that they had 40 groups where 20 groups dealt, were trained on control aspect while the other 20 groups were dealing with treatment. 
Uh, in this group, we had uh, three surveys. We had the baseline survey, we had the first follow-up survey, and the second follow-up survey. Uh, in the first follow-up survey, we did what we call uh, background information from the youth. We did the economic uh, activities from the youth. And then in the, sec the third follow-up, the endline survey, we did the business performance. Uh, during the training, we had uh, several modules. The first one, we had the business module. The second one, we had the technologies. The third one, we had the gender mainstreaming. And the fourth, we had the, the, the aspect of COVID-19. Ratich Eliud, also from the Carlo project team, speaks on the hygrometers, hermetic bags, and challenges faced. Uh, on the use of hygrometers, farmers normally store their maize without estimating their moisture content. Therefore, this hygrometer comes handy in ensuring that the right moisture content is achieved during storage. The use of these hygrometers has been able to help farmers in uh, storing produce which have been dried to uh, avoid issues of uh, aflatoxin. One of the main challenges uh, during the project was that uh, youth lack incentives and they lack uh, resources to undertake business. Because the project focused on youth resellers, we wanted the youth to be able to sell the bags after getting them from the agro dealer. The youth could not afford to get resources to acquire these bags. The other major constraint that we encountered is the mobility of the youth. Today you visit, you find the youth. Next time you are visiting to, for the follow-up activities, the youth maybe has, has, a, has gotten a job somewhere, so you won't be able to trace that youth. At Kangulo constituency, we meet one Jennifer Sila, an agro-dealer at Kalamba Agrivet, who tells us how she has been selling the hermetic bags to youths. Wananunua, wanaenda wanausa, wanakuja, wanalipa, wengine wanachukua mbila pesa, wanaenda wanausa, wanaleta pesa. Iko wengine wanasumbua, wengine wasumbui, lakini maradi siwa mbaya. Jonathan Mulo and Jacqueline Munyao speak on the benefits of the project, marketing strategy adopted and integration of their businesses, including input reselling. So we were able to partner up with uh, Haldo, whereby youth were trained about uh, post harvesting, where it uh, mostly included uh, preservation of food which has been harvested by farmers. And us being as youth in Kangundo, we are privileged to get training in uh, various uh, circumstances which involve uh, post harvesting. Maybe in categories which uh, mostly we face here is uh, food storage after harvesting. We were able to get most of the training which were, we took place in Kangundo and uh, we, we also partnered with uh, a, a local agro dealer whereby she, on the, uh, she assisted us on the input which the Caldero team were able to connect us with. And uh, on various cases, we were able to uh, acquire our magic bags. And uh, we also, they had a, a chance of uh, connecting us doing business, whereby we were able to uh, be asked to connect uh, with the uh, pesticides, uh, all manner of inputs which uh, agro dealers deal with. I used to sell the bags to my customers. I do a business of boutique, of selling clothes of ladies wear. And when a customer comes to buy a dress, after they buy, I used to tell them, to ask them questions about their farming activities, how they harvest their food, how they store their food. And after that, I used to show the customers the bag, teach the customer how to store the mains or any other cash crop in the bags and if customer is okay I used to sell the bags to the customers. TAME welcomes the partnership between the Kenyan government and Purdue University. Personally on behalf of Calro to thank Purdue University, Professor Jake uh, Kilberson in, 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 in person for spearheading, for spearheading these uh, post-harvest loss management uh, research that has really uh, brought some uh, sensitization not only to fellow researchers but also to the policy makers.